everybody, Professor Doom here. So I was taking a look at these question and answers from a general at the Department of Defense, and he was questioned about some of the strikes that were taking place in Syria. And there was something very interesting that he said that made me think about all of the domestic events that we've been seeing in the United States. So there have been a couple shootings a few days in a row. Of course, we had the Robert Card incident, wink, wink, in Maine that was very questionable, but we'll leave that to the side a second. Then we have the Tampa issue. Then we have the Laurel, Delaware issue. So day after day after day, they have been pounding this whole shooting uh, into the into the mainstream media. But do you know what was very interesting that this general said to the questions from the media? Let's take a look at what he said. This was the senior defense official with the Department of Defense at the Pentagon. Our strikes on Thursday for focused precision proportionate attacks, and the reason they were in Syria is because it's not about the location, it's about Iran and the IRGC who use infrastructure militants and proxies on the ground across the Middle East to include both Iraq and Syria. So even though there have been attacks against U.S. forces in Iraq, there have also been attacks against U.S. forces in Syria, and we were clear. That was Thursday night. But we reserve the right to respond in the at a time and place of our choosing, and we're going to continue to do so. What exactly does it mean we reserve the right? So hold on a second. If they're going to try to push for assault weapon bans, does that mean then that U.S. citizens who are in legal possession of these assault weapons could then use the exact same jurisprudence that they're claiming right here, we reserve the right. Doesn't that mean also that U.S. citizens can say the exact same thing when they say, hand over your assault weapons and the U.S. citizens say, we, res we reserve the right to refuse your unlawful order, not only from the Dick Act. Do you guys remember the Dick Act? Do I need to guys show you guys that act? And under the Second Amendment of the Constitution, we reserve the right to tell you to go screw yourself that we don't have to hand over anything because your demand is unlawful and you cannot reserve the right to come and take away assault weapons from law-abiding U.S. citizens that rights are guaranteed under the Constitution. Does that make sense to everybody? They can't, they can't claim that they reserve the right to, to uh, uh, overturn a constitution. They can't say that they reserve the right to take away something that's guaranteed under the constitution. But we, with the constitution in our hand, in backing our words, can say that we reserve the right to refuse your unlawful order. Let's take a look at the Dick Act one more time in case people have forgotten what it has said.
So I've uh, bypassed the introduction where it does indeed say in these exact words is that every able body citizen shall be in possession of a flintlock rifle. Okay. So every, but, but pay attention to the words, every able bodied citizen, because we are going to be the militia national guard. You guys understand the concept, but let's read page number six. It will be seen that the bill provides for the recognition in case of war of the national guard as the second line after the regular army as national guard for a limited period of service as organized in the various states. In the event of the requirement of volunteer forces, organizations of the National Guard are given the preference as volunteers or they may remain National Guards as they may elect. We, the people, may elect, not the government. It is us. Do we want to remain a part of the National Guard? As long as we elect to be in possession of a rifle, because it goes on to state that right here, it provides for arming the guard with the latest pattern army rifle. Well, excuse me, AR-15, a uh, army rifle? Is the army rifles semi-automatics or automatics? Are we allowed as citizens, as part of the Militia National Guard, are then we allowed to possess? No, not, not allowed. Hold on, because we reserve that right. As long as we elect to be the defenders of the United States from any foreign or domestic enemy of the United States, and we elect to be exactly that, there is no way that they can come and say that they reserve the right to extract assault rifles from the American public because we already reserve the right under the DICT Act and the U.S. Constitution to retain these firearms no matter what they are. And all of these people that are out there saying this, they're saying, well, what possible use could you have for possessing a semi-automatic assault rifle? Well, I guarantee you when the time comes and you have a foreign enemy trying to make their way into the United States, do you guys remember exactly what the Admiral of Japan said, what was it Yamamoto? What did he say when he was asked if he was going to invade the United States? Are you crazy, man? Don't you realize that there's American with a gun behind every blade of grass? You take away those weapons. You take away those assault uh, 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 firearms, those assault, gun, uh, uh, assault weapons from the United States and you've crippled the militia slash national guard that we elect to be with the guns that we own right now, you've disabled the defense of the people of the United States from foreign and domestic enemies. Since this general right here from the Department of Defense has said that they reserve the right to strike wherever they choose to do so, well, the American citizens who possess these assault weapons need to step up and say that you reserve the right to refuse to hand over your weapon because the U.S. government cannot force you to do something that you already are guaranteed the rights of. Does that make sense? Well, there you go. And if you guys want more on the Dick Act, in case you were unfamiliar with it, I'll leave you guys links in the description box so you can read the whole bill from 1903. Thanks, everybody.